I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about reactive programming, accessible colors, JavaScript errors, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a very long post on the introduction to reactive programming that you have been missing. All right, give us the TLDR. All right, well, what in the world is reactive programming? Well, the author of this article wanted to know exactly that and had to learn it the hard way, which was actually doing the programming and all sorts of reading. So the author of this article was nice enough to sum it all up in this very, very thorough article. That was just a quick scroll to give you an idea about how long this article is. Now I'm going to read this whole thing to you word by word, so get comfortable grab a beverage, and let's get to it. No, I'm just kidding. So what is reactive programming? This is basically the way of programming in which you are working with asynchronous data streams. And then after you have those asynchronous data streams, you are manipulating them in some way, and then displaying the output and reacting to events. Wow, that sure is a whole lot of things, and what, what does this all mean? Well, let's go ahead and, and see what happens. Well, this is an example of a stream. Notice it's got arrows and circles and colors. There, I hope that hmm. explains absolutely everything to you. Got it. Good. No, so um, the author of this article really shows what exactly happens when, hey, okay, I've got reactive programming, what's going on? Here's an example that we go through and recreate in this article. This is an example of a list of people to follow on Twitter. And you'll notice that there are a couple buttons on here. You can either follow this person, which is going to do something, or click the X, which will get rid of this suggestion and load up another one. You can also refresh this, which will go out and refetch different people to follow, and so on and so forth. So the rest of this article walks through doing that and walks through reactive programming in the process. So basically, they take this whole request and response, then you subscribe to the request, and then use jQuery to get a JSON response, and then you can subscribe to that as well. Once this is all gone, yeah, look at that. Th these are, this is just a small example of the emotions that you'll experience while reading this article. So you get these requests and responses. Okay, the request goes out and then the response comes up. Here's like the little A is the request, big A is the response. And then the article shows you how to combine all this, what happens in these responses. And by the end of the article, you have a whole response stream. This is the entire code that you write in this article, along with a great explanation of how this all works. Now, obviously, I can't explain all this to you, but this is an absolutely wonderful introduction to reactive programming. Definitely check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a tool for choosing colors, but not just any colors, colors that are safe for the WCAG, that's Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, guidelines, just like ATM machine or PIN number. So I'm going to go ahead and click Get Started here. And I can pick a background color. So I'm going to click here. And I'll pick a darker background color. So maybe we'll go with like a, like a dark blue or something like that. And then I've got a font family, font size, font weight, and WCAG standard. Let's go, let's go AAA. Then we'll say, all right, generate the color palette. Ooh, that's nice. And then we can click on these. and pick a secondary color for the text. But like I said, this is not just any kind of color. These are colors that hit the proper contrast ratio to be compliant with the WCAG standards. So if you have a color that you definitely want to use for a background color, well, then you can go ahead and pick colors that are going to match for that contrast ratio. So let's try another example. Let's go back up here and let's maybe pick yellow. a really bright color. So we'll go ahead and go with maybe this light yellow. We'll say, okay, generate color palette. And now it should come up with, there we go, 
some dark colors. So those dark colors will match the lighter color that we picked. So this isn't necessarily a tool for picking color palettes that are going to be aesthetically pleasing, but that doesn't mean that you can't make them aesthetically pleasing just by picking good colors that will match your color palette. What this tool really is for is to make sure that you have enough contrast in your text and your background so that your text is actually readable. Yeah, and you know, if, if you're worried about that, lighten up. Get it? It's a color pun. Next up, we have a blog post on how to track JavaScript errors in AngularJS and jQuery using Google Analytics. So the benefit of this is if you have some sort of JavaScript error on your site, when you load up Google Analytics, you can see the error and the message right inside. So they tell you how to do it using the classic Google Analytics JS. And it's actually really, really easy to do. Just go ahead and, hey, whenever you have an error, push it onto the stack and boom, you are good to go. Also, show how to do it in Angular JS using an exception handler service. Also, very, very easy to use. Just load up a module, and then configure it, do the same push of the error and tracking the event. And another example with jQuery. What does this look like when you get into Google Analytics? Well, you can enter some errors on here. And then if you scroll down, you'll see this is what it can look like right on the Google Analytics site. You get a JavaScript error, shows you the exact error that happened, when it happened, how many times, and also works for AngularJS and jQuery. So this is a really, really great uh, tool to have in your arsenal. It can also take the place of some specific error reporting services that you might have to pay money for. Anyway, check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. You can see them right below this video. Very nice stuff. Well, keeping with the theme of accessibility from the previous link, here's yet another tool that does a very similar thing. Oh, so you mean there's not a lot of contrast between the last tool? Mm. Nope, they're pretty similar. So in keeping with the theme of accessibility, this is another tool that will help you measure the WCAG guidelines. Guidelines. The, web the guidelines guidelines. The web content accessibility guidelines guidelines. And it will help you measure the contrast ratio of your background to text. Except instead of suggesting colors, this tool will allow you to pick any colors you want. So we can use these sliders down here to make adjustments. And it will tell us, okay, well, right now we're hitting a triple A level of con contrast. But if we maybe bring down the lightness, oh, oh this is down this, to double A. It's down to double A. We are failing. And this is okay if the text is large, but this is not okay. And then right down here, oh, now we are hitting fail. Oh, I see then then the uh, the number on the top right changes and shows you what your score is. That's right. It's pretty low right now because it's tough to read. So let's bring that down and then maybe if we bring up the background, Ooh. oh, we can go back to AAA. So that's th nice. This tells you and quantifies for you just how much contrast is in your text, which is really important for not only accessibility reasons, but also just for design in general. It's good to have nice, crisp, legible text. Definitely. Next up, we have a blog post from Ian Devlin on dynamically adding text tracks to HTML5 video. Now, why in the world would you want to do that? Well, maybe you don't want to load the entire track up front, save mobile users some bandwidth. You can use a callback to load a text track later. This could be useful for adding something like closed captioning. So how do you do that? Well, you can add an event listener for loaded metadata and then add a text track to it and boom, you are good to go. So there is a little bit more in-depth um, instructions for what you need to do. You can add some attributes to it and you get a little callback function here. And then you can even set different modes on the video. And by the end of it, you have an entire working example of creating another text track dynamically in HTML5 video. So that's it, just a really quick how-to post if you're working with HTML5 video. 
Very nice stuff. Well, I think that is all we have time for this week. Congrats on making it through another episode. I am at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes right below this video. We want to thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.